So this hilt has all the original parts that were used on the Obi-Wan Sabre in A New Hope. That's right. This is the Holy Grail of all Holy Grail. We are in the offices of Sabre Mach. Uh, this is Singapore's Sabre company of course, sorts, right? That's you right. guys make Sabres, That's but right, Bobby. Jay, as the founder, has the Holy Grail. That's right. So over here, we have a um, Sabre that is made of all the original found items uh, that was used to make the Obi-Wan Sabre from A New Hope. So as you know, during the uh, 1970s, they don't have a huge budget, they can't machine the savers, so they, they took a lot of the found objects that they could find mm -hmm. and piece everything together. So um, over here, this is all the original part that were used and we managed to track them down, put them all together and form the Obi-Wan saber. How many of these type of saber hilts are in the world? So um, based on my last 15, 20 years of collection, mm. I would say that probably about less than 10 in the entire world because the parts are really, really scarce and um, you, you don't really find them very often right now. So about 10 in the world? About 10 in the world. Like this. What kind of value would this be? If you were to sell this out there, what do you think? Okay, so the it? recent auction by one of the collectors, mm. uh, it was ranging between 15 to about 25,000 US dollars. Yeah. Wow. And that is if you can find one. So <laughs> even if you have the money, you might not be able to find the parts as well. Now let's go through some of the parts because this is really interesting. Walk us through how this hilt was made. Okay, so uh, for the Obi-Wan Sabre, this is actually made of five of different parts. Mm -hmm. So you can see people here. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to go with the bottom all the way to the top. Sure. Because, uh, in terms of scarcity of parts, right? Okay. So this is actually um, a faucet knob. Uh, made by the company called the Armitage Shank. So I believe this, if I'm not wrong, is about in the 1960s or 1970s. Uh, so if you are looking at now, we are in 2022, it's about 50 over years since they, they made this. Wow. Um, so this was probably plucked out from a hotel or someone's home. So uh, this is a faucet knob. Um, it actually has the name right there on the bottom. It does. So, uh, and then moving upwards, this uh, bottom section here is actually uh, taken from a what they call a booster mm -hmm. uh, for a World War II machine gun. What? So if you look at uh, a flash suppressor, right? Yeah. Uh, so this is like that heat sink yeah. uh, just below the suppressor uh -huh. to kind of uh, ease out all the heat. So right. this is like a heat sink. And of course in the middle, this is a uh, middle clamp yeah. uh, taken out from a Graflex tree cell. Um, that is basically, basically a flash gun that was used in the 1940s. A lot of all the press, uh, all the reporters in the back. Oh, right, the flash. Yes, yeah, the exactly. flash the photography and stuff. Yes. Yeah. So okay. you, will, you will recognize this uh, as part of uh, the saber for the Luke Skywalker yep. from A New Hope. So you will recognize that this is part of his saber as well. Okay. Right over here is actually, uh, if you can see, the seven digits or seven bubbles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So yeah. this is what they call a seven digit ex uh, bubble calculator from the company called Exectra. Okay. So I can't remember when this was uh, uh, produced, mm. uh, but this is actually that, um, that magnifier that magnifies the digit on the calculator itself. Interesting. Over here, um, I have no idea why they choose to do it, but this too is actually a uh, transistor. Mm -hmm. uh, it's from this brand called Marconi. Yep. So I have no idea why they put it over here. Uh, but if you look at the screen, um, the screen grab or the reference photo of the original prop, you will see that the markings, the NE and the DAT, mm -hmm. is actually on the reference photo. So really? Yeah. So this is the exact transistor out there. And um, moving up. Yeah. This itself uh, is one of a pretty rare one as well. If you look at this, this British rifle grenade or they call it the mk1 wow if I'm not wrong okay so uh of course it's inert so yeah. meaning that uh if you open up it there's, there's no uh gunpowder or anything it's just a machine part mm -hmm. so if you want to launch a grenade you put this into your rifle and you blast it off and apparently this wind vane here is going to guide your uh grenade to the direction of uh you know 
Isn't this fascinating? This is absolutely, I'm blown away Pretty by amazing, how right? they put all this together. I have no idea how they <laughs> even could think about putting a rifle grenade inside. And of course, we come to the part that is the uh, is really, really scary. I believe that you can only find this right in a um, jet engine uh, by Rolls Royce. So this is actually called a Derwent mm -hmm. or D R W E N T Derwent jet engine. Okay. This is called a balance pipe. I have no idea what the part is used for in the Rolls Royce, yeah. but uh, it is part of a jet engine. So if you know IG eighty eight, right? Yeah. The Derwent jet engine is taken out of the IG-88 head. Yes, you didn't know that, right? So, so if you look at the IG-88, so some parts of it, is so that, that balance part is stuck in there, and they have like eight of them. They have the male and the female version. Yeah. This is the female version, the correct one, and they pluck it out. So if you get a Derwin jet engine, you can take out eight of them. Jeez. Yeah. So this completes the original found items that were used to make the original uh, saber for Obi-Wan. So yeah. this is, I mean, obviously you have Vader and yes, Luke Skywalker well. Saber, all original parts. All original parts. So, the, so like I mentioned early on, this is actually a Graflex, a yeah. camera flash. Yeah. You, you put this in into the camera and yeah. then there's a big flash over here. Yeah. So that, you know, when you press the button and then the, in the, in the whole flash, chow, chow. Yeah. so this is actually part of it. Okay. Uh, this is also another flash, but by a brand called uh, MPP, it stands for Micro Precision uh, Product. Uh, this flash itself is uh, manufactured much lesser than the graph flash. So you can really find this uh, on eBay from uh, vintage um, camera collectors, you can find right. them. Uh, but this is really, really hard to find. So um, this is like the second holy grail. And um, so basically I've, I've got these parts for a couple of years. Mm. So I think about last year, I sent these parts uh, to a guy um, his company's name is called Iron Destiny. Mm -hmm. So he is a specialist in um, taking all these parts and and get all the different like the grips and stuff like that, and get all the notches, the dents, the scratches. Uh, they, he replicates all those exactly from the reference photos of the original part. But yeah. look at all the dings on the grip as well. These were all that's hand, all hand done. It's hand done. It's, it's supposed to be brand new, right? <laughs> try to get one. So it's a lot of um, a lot of work to get this uh, done by the guys uh, in uh, Iron Destiny. That's the original. Yep. Now this is what you guys make here. That's right. Which is based basically almost the exact same thing here. Yeah. So this one itself, uh, um, you can see that it is very close to yep. the um, to the original one. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, it doesn't have all the dings and dents of your sure. So this is like a pristine a machine version of uh, the replica itself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is why. But it's still made of steel as well. Yes. So the original part for this two is actually made of steel. Mm -hmm. So this two is also made of steel. Right. So they are not aluminum. No, it yeah. it feels very weighty. I mean, very this, weighty indeed. this one is not something that you would necessarily use for combat or for, nah. it's more for show. It is. But we're going to talk about, because you guys do combat sabers as well, we right? Yeah, as well over Okay, here. cool. So now I, I know you got a, one of your associates here who's sort of like your Padawan, yep. in a sense. So he's our lead <laughs> designer at Saber Mark. He designs a lot of the uh, saber design. Yeah. He designs all the chassis, uh, uh, some of the different uh, components of the saber. So yeah. he's the guy. Okay. Yeah. Afri. Come on in, man. So walk us through some of the things that you do here. Okay, so uh, like Jay mentioned, I am the lead designer. Mm. So when it comes to designing work, it's not just about how the Sabre looks on the outside and how fantastic it looks, yeah. but also how well it runs on the inside. Gotcha. So I've got with me here, one of our newer stuff. Wow. So over time, we want to try and continuously uh, improve on how the electronics are held inside. So, you know, yeah. back then it was uh, held by uh, acrylic or Delrin discs, but now we have 3D printing. 3D printing is, is such an amazing technology that we've had for the past few years. Yeah. Uh, the electronics are held comfortably and you know, and they are shockproof. So these are the things that I, I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And not just uh, the, the hardware, I also meddle with the software. So when it comes to um, you know, how a saber behaves, right with uh, the blade attached. Yes. So all these little fine things like how the saber ignites, how it retracts, how the different you know blaster blocks activate, these are the kind of stuff that, that I... You, you play with all the time. So you're giving people a very creative option That's to right. sabers out there. That's right. We are watching the Obi-Wan trailer, the new series coming out May 27th, plug for That's Disney right. Plus. And the saber though is a little bit different 
than the one from A New Hope, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Walk us through, what's the difference real quick? So I think, um, okay, Eagle Eye fans would probably notice that the saber that he's holding mm -hmm. is not really from A New Hope. So we won't exactly be seeing this version. Mm -hmm. You'd probably be uh, a little more familiar with the uh, version that was released in The Revenge of the Sith. The, the, the one slight difference that you'd probably be able to see, yeah. uh, even I think in, in they've released a couple of close-up yeah. uh, shots of oh, the saber, is the emitter cup. Yeah. Now we think, we think, we believe the emitter cup is going to be the one that's from A New Hope. Ah. Uh, and of course the saber is going to be a little weathered. Yes. Okay. But we don't know if he'll get another saber before the end of the series that goes kind of transitions into New Hope. So, so we're waiting, we're yeah. waiting. Yeah. We want to see more first before That's we get right. anything done. So for the collectors out there, they're going to be anticipating this show, not just because they want to watch it, but what saber Obi-Wan is wielding. That's right. All right. Let's go check out your workshop. Can you show us a little bit of that? Yeah. That's badass, right? Yeah. You know how to you know how to wield this a lot better than I do. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> this, this this is a hundred percent made in house by Saber Mark. So I can show you a couple of stuff that I'm working on. Yeah. So what we have here is a dark saber flat blade before assembly. So essentially what goes into your typical uh, premium level blades yep. are your, your LED strips. Okay. These LED strips are the kinds that you see in your computer. Yeah. So those RGB strips. Right. The great thing about these strips are because they are programmable, you get all these kind of fun effects, right? You can program them to have blaster block, lockup, the ignition and retraction. These are machine in-house. This is 3D printed, designed by ourselves here. Mm. The strips go inside, we put the vinyl on, and then after that, we, we secure the PCB, yeah. and then it goes into testing. So, here in Sabermark, we have different tiers of sabers that we offer customers. Right, okay. Right, so we've got replicas, mm -hmm. which we call the Legacy Series. We've got the premium ones, which are 100% machine in-house. We also have uh, a, a tier of sabers called Kit Sabers. Yeah. Now, Kit Sabers, they are affordable ones mm -hmm. for customers who are a little tight on the money, yeah. but still want to have something cool. Sure. So what we did with this one is we took a a budget saber yeah. and we added our own flair to it. So this one's clearly inspired by a samurai's katana. Yeah. So we added a suba, we added a leather wrap. We even provide a sheath for customers. Awesome. Okay, so it's, oh, it's very different than yes. I see what you're saying, yeah. yeah. But they're combat worthy. Okay, so you can really beat these around and it's yeah. good. It still has smooth swing, uh, but believe it or not, this is a budget saber. Yeah, there we go. Interesting. Now, you showed us more of the budget side. What's the most extravagant I'll side? I'll show it to you, yeah. So we, we also have customers who want uh, designs that are unique to themselves. Right. Uh, not just on the outside, but on the inside as well. So this one that we have here is an acid etched uh, saber. So wow. the design is inspired by a character from the old Republic games. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the customer wanted uh, sort of an olive green with a uh, rust weathering. So, so we, we made that not so obvious, so we don't want you know, the weathering to be so overwhelming. Yeah. But the customer also requested a metal 3D printed uh, chassis cover. So wow, jeez. That's beautiful. It's amazing. That is beautiful. We I'm afraid to ask what the price would be on something like that. <laughs> um, it's up there, right? It, it, it's up there, but it's not. Four, four, digit, four digits? It's four digits. Four digits, yeah. okay. This one is going to be a part of our premium saber. So wow. this one is a new uh, design that we came up with last year. When you're holding this, it's beautifully made. Yeah, it feels right. very well Thank balanced. Um, it's a kind of, I mean, was it stainless steel or aluminum? This is aluminum. Yeah, it's lightweight. But I mean, just the craftsmanship, just the amount of detail is awesome. If you take a look there. Yeah, I see that. We've got a laser cut abalone. 
Wow. Shell, uh, which are responsibly sourced, yeah, of course. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, inside we have You have a, a kyber crystal. That's right. So this one's a prototype of uh, the one that we're gonna be putting into uh, production. And it'll light up as well? It does. Whoa. Yeah. So the chamber what? will be in metal. This one's just a prototype print. And we've got an OLED in the back as well. Oh shit, that's badass. So how do you charge this? Or you just, just change yeah. the battery? So batteries are removable. Okay. You just get a battery charger. Yeah. Pull the battery out and then put them into a battery charger. Okay. They run on 18650 batteries. Yeah. Uh, they should typically last between 45 to an hour. Okay. Uh, if you put the Sabre on max settings. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. All right. Afri, thank you so much. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Do that again. Do that again. What was it? It boots up. Wow. Wow, that's really responsive. That's amazing. You'll see these uh, soon, hopefully, maybe the end of the year. Okay, yeah. all right. You know what we haven't seen yet? We just saw a little bit of the dark saber. Do you have an actual normal saber blade? Did okay. You, like a round one? We do. Whoa. So you have the ignition and retraction effects. You've also got blaster block. Blade lock up. You can actually even move the lock up as you tilt the saber. Because you know, you want your duels to be dynamic. Right. So if I'm blocking that way and then you know, you've got another blade coming up. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So these are what uh, the Plecto Labs Crystal Focus X soundboard is capable of. And these blades are combat ready blades? They're combat ready blades. Wow. It's so responsive. It is so responsive, you know? Wow. Thank you, Alfred. Thank you, thank you. All right, we're gonna go to check out, see what Jay's doing downstairs, see the manufacturing process, then we're gonna come back and take a look at some of what you got in the display as well. All right. All right, thanks, Alfred. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. This video is brought to you by Secret Lab. Here at Geek Culture, we love our Secret Lab chairs, especially the all-new 2022 Titan Evo with its revamped four-way lumbar system for enhanced back support. If PU Leather 2.0 isn't your cup of tea, then consider the all-new Soft Weave, even more soft and breathable than before. The chair comes in more colors, including this lovely frost blue. The Titan Evo is even magnetized, allowing the head pillow to stick on the headrest without straps. Of course, there are even more new features, so do check them out at secretlab.co. So this is the lathe right here, but what are the, what are the machines you have here in the shop? Right, so we also have a milling machine okay. um, over there. Okay. And uh, we have uh, two laser machines, one for cutting for larger pieces, the other one for engraving. So how much hours, how many hours do you spend here a day? Uh, anywhere from 12 to 15 hours. Cutting. Cutting, I mean, we are going by batches, right? So wow. We, do, we are doing a batch of stuff, been here for all week. 12 to 15 hours. But when we are not doing machining, then we are going, we are upstairs doing an assembly. All right, Jay, well, thank you so much for this. And uh, we'll go upstairs and yep. see some of the sabers that you guys make. Yep, and so on. great. Try some of them out as well. You should. Let's, let's, let's do, do it. it man. All right. All right, Jay, thank you so much for showing this. Uh, hey, my pleasure, man. Yeah, this has been a lot of fun. A lot of, ex I mean, just the knowledge here. Yes, pretty overwhelming, right, actually. This is so pretty, many details and stuff. There's like a lot that. of details. And look at all these yeah. sabers that you guys sell. The legacy, replicas, yeah. all so, the way to some of the inspired versions. Right, absolutely awesome. And this piece is very interesting. Yeah, so this is a, a work in progress. It's what we call the melt. So basically it simulates, let's say if you were to put the saber in through a metal door, yeah. it starts to melt. Okay. So that's how the effect of the uh, saber is going to look like. Oh wow! Yeah, so of course this is actually a magnet. So if you, if you have a fridge or a cabinet that's made of metal, you put it in, it kind of simulates that, that whole melt look. That's it very looks a lot cool. better during nighttime as well. That's very cool. Yeah, so that is uh, a work in progress, but 
is a, is a one of our original designer uh, designs. I don't think anyone else is doing this. Yeah. Yeah. That is wicked. All right, Jay. Thanks for that. I've got the high ground saber in my hand. That's right. Which is very reminiscent of something that may be coming out yes. at the end of this month. End of this month. Yes. Yeah. And you've got I, your own. And I have one. This is a flat blade. Shall we turn it on? Let's turn it on. Right. Oh wow. Hi. Yeah. What? So good. Ah. All right, guys, that wraps it up for us right now. We're in a Saber Duel. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, SaberMock.com. Until the next one, take care. Thanks, Jay. Ah.